During powerful and sustained volcanic eruptions, explosive depressurization of magma at the vent produces a continuous jet of gas and ash into the atmosphere. Understanding the nature of this jet and how it influences the eruption column is important for assessing the hazards associated with it. Unfortunately, it's often impossible to see what's happening at the vent during such a violent eruption. By using low-frequency sound waves, or infrasound, we hope to hear what is happening at the vent. We'd love to go to a real volcano for this, but sometimes we need to remember the eloquent wisdom of our teachers. Professor Lava Heart! So we'll stay in the lab today. We'll create a model of a volcanic jet and use it to demonstrate the effect of vent size and jet velocity on the sounds produced by an erupting volcano. Our apparatus will consist of a compressed air source linked by a hose to a one-way valve. Air will be forced through the valve into a storage chamber and finally exit at the jet nozzle. First, let's take a look at a simple gas jet. As the air exits the nozzle, it creates a pressure wave which travels through the atmosphere and is registered in our ears and at microphones as sound. Now that's all well and good, but you can only see this jet if I hold something up to it. In a real situation, a volcanic jet is full of not only gas, but also tons of ash, lava bombs, and other rock debris from the vent. So let's see what happens if we add particles to this jet. We filled our storage chamber with flour to simulate the effect of ash in a volcanic jet. First, we'll start with a medium diameter nozzle and low gas pressure. Now, let's see what happens if we double the pressure. You can see how the higher gas pressure causes an increase in the jet velocity, which causes a proportional increase in the frequency of the jet noise. Let's test what happens if instead of becoming wider at the vent, the conduit becomes narrower and constricts the flow. The constricted nozzle forces the air through in a much more confined jet, as well as at a higher velocity which significantly increases the frequency of the sound. So you can see how vent diameter and eruptive velocity relate to the sound emitted during an explosive eruption. Now for a bit of fun, let's kick it up a notch and see what happens during a large, sustained explosive eruption. We've shown how particle velocity and vent diameter can influence the sound produced by a gas jet. Higher jet velocities lead to more rapid pulses of turbulence within the jet, which causes the emission of pressure waves at higher frequencies. Conversely, a higher diameter vent leads to a lower frequency of sound because the sound is produced over a larger length scale, similar to how a tuba is lower in frequency than a trumpet. The larger size of volcanic jets during eruptions, up to hundreds of meters in scale, leads to the emission of sound at much lower frequencies, most of it below the range of human hearing. By recording the infrasound produced in a volcanic jet, we hope to gain vital clues as to what is happening at the vent during violent explosive eruptions. There's something happening here what it is ain't exactly clear I think it's time we stop, children, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down